this lesson is basically a foundational lesson for Unit 3, which is an introduction to ecosystems. We're not really touching on much subject matter, um, but really important to understand and get our facts right before we begin. So simplistically put, ecology is the study of living organisms and their interactions with the world around them. It's really big picture stuff. And the phrase, we couldn't see the forest for the trees, means that you're looking a little bit too closely at the finer details to see the bigger picture. So pardon the pun with the mention of trees, but this unit, uh, we are basically aiming to see the forest and the trees. So the big picture, or the forest, is really dependent on all those smaller details and interactions that are occurring. And of course, you know, these are dependent on what's going on at a big picture level as well. So details are important to get right so that we can predict what is occurring at the big picture level. And we're looking at a broad range of topics, not too much depth, but a lot to know. So we have to start with an understanding of what an ecosystem actually is. And there's many definitions, but generally an ecosystem is a self-sustaining unit consisting of all the interactions between the communities of organisms and their physical surroundings. So it must be self-sustaining, meaning it has no outside input. So like a fish tank, um, but think you know of a terrarium or something like a mesocosm. You're talking something with a lid on where there is nothing being put in. Within these ecosystems, there's communities of organisms and physical factors, and they tend to be similar and uniform. And all of these components are really tightly linked to the cycling of nutrients and any other raw materials like water water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, among many other things. So ecosystems fit within a much larger biome, so a more generalized way to look at ecosystems where organisms and conditions are similar across a geographical region. And there's lots of different divisions of this, I suppose. Ecosystems themselves are made up of a variety of habitats, right? They're ranging from very large to very small, and habitats are smaller regions within that larger ecosystem. They may experience slightly different conditions to the ecosystem overall. So, for example, a microhabitat found in a little indent in a tree that's full of water, um, you know, it's a fallen tree, whatever, it might have really um, high humidity because it's got, you know, a pile of water sitting in it, but it might have less wind exposure than, say, if the tree was standing up. Um, because it's really shallow, it might be really susceptible to rain when compared to, say, the rest of the wider ecosystem. Conversely, an ecoregion, when we're talking in the ecoregion, it's a large biogeographical region within an ecosystem, and it may see a much broader range of conditions and a variety of populations living within it. Within every ecosystem, there are a number of factors at play, right? Both the physical features and the, of the environment and the organisms living within it will have a huge impact on the experiences and survival of all the organisms within it. So we're talking about biotic factors, which you've seen before in junior, and we're talking about abiotic factors. Biotic and abiotic, right? The abiotic are those which we consider the physical characteristics of the environment, whereas the biotic ones are those which are directly related to other organisms within that ecosystem. We're talking abiotic factors. The first thing we might think of are physical factors, and we're talking things like temperature. So most organisms have a preference for somewhere between 0 and 45 degrees, and I say most, that's not all. Uh, we're talking so uh, soil composition, so it might depend on the rock type, the rainfall, the temperature, the age of the soil. So many plants prefer certain types of uh, soils. We might be talking rainfall, both the amount of it and how it is spread across the year. We might be talking altitude and pressure, depending on the um, height of that ecosystem. If you're talking under the water, if you're talking really deep ocean, then obviously there's going to be pressure involved there. And you might be talking about light penetration as well. So both aquatic and terrestrial environments, uh, that light penetration is going to influence how much photosynthesis occurs. When we're talking chemical abiotic factors, it's things like pH, uh, dissolved oxygen in an aquatic environment, carbonate, phosphate, nitrate concentrations of soil, salinity levels, and we're going to talk a lot about these in terms of their cycling ability through an ecosystem to keep everything else um, living. We're also going to be talking about dynamic things. So when you're thinking abiotic factors, we're talking about things like wind speed and patterns and wave action. So only a few species are able to actually withstand really harsh sea winds, salty spray, generally rough conditions, things like that. Organisms will tend to have a range within these kind of conditions that they tolerate um, and, you know, more narrow ranges which they consider to be favourable to grow, survive, reproduce, whatever it is they need to be doing. So outside of these, it's less likely that they're going to be able to do things outside of their tolerance ranges. Ecosystems will have a gradient of each of these factors and finding the ideal combination of all the factors allows that organism to thrive in those ideal conditions. 
Biotic factors are ways in which organisms directly influence their environment, and some of these factors might include, say, an organism's source of food, whether it's a consumer or a producer. Um, it might be we might be talking about their interactions with other species, so competition, predation, symbiosis, parasitism, whatever it is. We have to think about disease. Usually, diseases are considered those biotic factors. So even if it's bacterial or viral, um, births, deaths, migration rates, they're going to affect the either over or under population um, and therefore competition for resources and reproduction things like that and obviously you know human activities are going to have an impact on that and we ourselves are animals so we consider that a biotic factor so not really touching on too much of the content to start with but really important that we consider the guidance part of this as well um, in order for us to get our foundational skills right